going to get much more traction there than it did here, although it got actually probably got more traction there, but just not enough to do any good. Now, there was another, uh, along the same vein of uh, trying to, uh, uh, I guess, uh, tarnish people's reputation. Uh, I have a friend here in Las Vegas, and she said, Ed, I know this couple. They're involved in this investigation with TWA. They wrote a book. They're great. The guy's an ex-cop. Their name is Jim and Liz. Here's their phone number. Here's their email. They, they don't return my yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know who they Right. Now. Oh, I know them well. Sure. They're good friends of mine. Uh, but the official. And uh, they are. Uh, they Right. Uh, I don't want to give. Uh, I won't mention their last names. They live in Las Vegas. So yeah. you're in. Uh, but yeah, they, I, they, everyone knows who they are. It's James and Elizabeth Sanders. James and I collaborated on the the first book, uh, First Strike, in 2003. We also collaborated on a video in 2001. I got interested in them because I've met them four years after the crash. And when I realized that the government was willing to uh, arrest and convict Elizabeth Sanders especially, his real sweetheart, former Polynesian dance instructor, TWA trainer, um, she was arrested for introducing her husband, who was an investigative reporter, to a 747 manager of working investigation. And for that, she was arrested and convicted of conspiracy to steal airplane parts. They're, when I met them, they were both still on probation. I said, boy, these guys are playing hardball. Uh, and there must, there's probably more to this story than, you know, than just some mere, you know, will of the wisp uh, conspiracy. Yeah, the official story was is that they were beachcombers who were taking, uh, collecting debris and taking it home for their fun uh, as souvenirs. <laughs> Wasn't that the official that's story? A, right. Yeah. No, that's that's a nuts, nutty story. But they were uh, what they got them on. The law that they were arrested on was uh, was created to um, discourage uh, uh, scavengers from coming to the site of an airplane crash. It had nothing to do with reporters looking for information. What happened was that the their pilot, their inside source, who was working the investigation, was convinced that. There was a whole row of planes, a row, row of seats, a couple rows covered with a, a residue from the missile. And he tried to, to cut the flake it off, but he couldn't flake. So he took a pinch of foam rubber, which contained that, that material or that residue. And Sanders had it tested in a private lab. And that's what they arrested them for. And it wasn't really stealing parts. It was stealing information, which should have been protected by the First Amendment. Wait, wait, so clarify for me. He, they didn't actually take a big giant part or even a small part. They just clipped off a piece of uh, fabric from a, a chair? Uh, uh, yeah, a pinch of foam rubber out of, out of an ocean of pinches. You know, there could have been a thousand more pinches. It wasn't like they right. interfered with the investigation, you know. And, and, I mean, we're talking like maybe a cubic inch of foam rubber, you know. Okay, that's, that's a good clarification. There. Now, and also, too, Sanders, uh, Ed, what's his name, Jim Sanders, was an ex-cop. Ex cop, yeah, and and uh, traffic investigator, which is how we got involved. Which you know, he was a technical guy with some experience in this. His contact, Terry Stacy, was a, you know, like the lead seven forty seven pilot for uh, TWA, which is a really prestigious position. And you know, he was willing to put his whole reputation and his pension on the line to get the truth out. This was you know months after the crash when right. it was still in the news, you know. And just think, you know, and they they all were arrested. How hard is it to arrest the next cop in New York? He was he was a New York cop. Yeah. Yeah. No, he was a California cop, <laughs> oh, okay. and uh, he had been uh, he had medically retired after an injury. Uh, but yeah, they got no First Amendment protection at all. The media in New right. York cheered their conviction. The FBI put out these happy press releases. Um, yeah, you know, and Sanders when he was going through this was thinking to himself. Isn't there someone in the media here who's going to raise a First Amendment issue, you know? But not if the information is counter to the story you're trying to sell. Right. You're trying to reelect the president and someone's trying to get in your way. Look what happened to Julian Assange. He used to be a hero <laughs> of the left, you know, up until recently. Yeah, and we see now with WikiLeaks and stuff like that how, how much the Clintons control yeah, the press. Right. It's just it's outrageous. But how many uh, – did, they didn't do any actual time, right? But how many years probation did they get? Well, Jim got five and Elizabeth got three. Uh, the only time they did was, you know, like in the holding areas and right. jail cells or whatever. Yeah. They did have to do a perp walk in orange jumpsuits, but uh, they did not go to prison officially. Amazing. Yeah, and and what would probably stop them is that it was it would have called more attention to the case. They could quietly arrest them and silence them. They could let the independent investigators out there, and there's still many out there, very, very good ones. Um let them know that there was a penalty to be paid for trying to find out the truth here. Yeah. 
wasn't there something too uh, that the the flight controller who was actually watching this thing in, in live time has come forward? Yeah, he he called me or contacted me after my book came out, and I've written about him in subsequent articles. Uh, he's uh, and he you know the articles I wrote, he said, yeah, you got it exactly right. He said, you know, he, he and then I've talked to so many people who say the same thing. Listen, I got dependent children. I, yeah. I need this pension, you know. Um, and, you know, they saw what happened to, to Salinger. They see no interest from anyone who could protect them, like, they say, the New York Times or the government. And so they're very cautious about going public with their information. And, what you know, when people say, oh, why don't more people come forward? Well, you know, why? Why? I mean, what's in it for them? I mean, they, they, you know, they want to tell the truth. These are honest, decent, or, you know, good people. But if all they're going to get from the media and all they're going to get from the government is punishment, uh, it just doesn't, they don't see the, the, you know, the return on their investment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that's been my, like I said, the friends I had that were involved in the recovery. And by the way, now speaking of that recovery, which was pretty uh, uh, unprecedented, I believe, to, 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 to recover a whole aircraft. Now, they put together, they reassembled. About 80%, 80%, 90% of this craft. Am I correct? Yeah, which, right. And they did that just as for show and for delay to, 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 post, to push the, uh, you know, it was, it was odd because um, when Clinton met with Taylor Branch about a week or so after the crash in his private interview that would not become public for another 10 years, he talked about how they were going to put the, the plane together. He said, yeah, that'll probably take past, take them past November. <laughs> Yeah, that was the point. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. You know, yeah. we're we're still investigating here. We still don't know. We we have to be cautious. We don't want to rush to judgment. You know. Now, was that ever done before or since? No, yeah, right. never before and never since. Now, I also heard, too, I was listening to some of your presentations. Now, you said that there were some horror stories about what went on during that reassembly process. Can you give us an idea of that. Oh yeah, I mean they were, uh, and this caused a lot of friction. Uh, between, especially between the NTSB and the FBI and between the CWA people and the FBI, the union, uh, by the way, the, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of unions, but the IAM, the International Association of Machinists and Aero Space Workers, was the only entity that put forth a positive re- and honest report at the end of the investigation, which was included in the final NTSB report that said that what blew up this plane originated outside the plane. It wasn't from inside. And... Um, they were, of course, silent. But the um, what they did is they found that people actually destroying and manipulating evidence during the course of the investigation, flattening pieces of material so that it looked like the uh, explosion came from inside the plane rather than outside, uh, manipulating the uh, the arrangement of the debris field so it would appear that it to match the sequence that they had imagined of a the nose of the plane just blowing off spontaneously. Uh, they, you know, the, the whole investigation was uh, skewed from the beginning by a, really a handful of people in the know, including the CIA people, two analysts, their uh, their guy inside the NTSB, and um, I think uh, a few uh, FBI agents who were willing to play along. Now, what kind of what kind of settlements? There must have been lawsuits at the end of this. What kind of settlements were made? Uh, you know, the families, as would be true in just about any you know, domestic plane crash were compensated. Um, that had the effect of, um, you know, to be compensated for an act of terror, they wouldn't have been. If it were a military accident, they might not have been. But uh, Boeing fell on its sword, and TWA did too. Boeing was in the middle of a, a negotiation with McDonnell Douglas. They really didn't have any choice if they wanted this to go through. That uh, merger, by the way, gave them the, uh, you know, monopoly on essentially all commercial airplane production in the United States, the same Justice Department in the same week that they approved the McDonnell Douglas Boeing merger, turned down a merger of Office Depot and Staples, which would have given them 6% control of the of the pivotal uh, American office supply market. <laughs> you know, so there's no justice here. Uh, Boeing did what they had to do. TWA did what they had to do. To survive, they they didn't survive much longer. The TWA people are are still thoroughly angry about what happened to them and their airplane. And if you saw my presentation on Book TV, you saw that I did it at the TWA museum. Uh, and because I don't know a TWA person who thinks that 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 plane blew up spontaneously. 
Yeah, yeah. Every little puzzle piece fits, you know. And, and then when you talk about the yeah, yeah the, you know, when the settlements do. Now we're almost out of time. What do you want to leave us with? How can you sum all this up? Well, I would say this is that the real the real culprit here, the real scandal, is a media scandal. And uh, you know, governments, you know, as our founding fathers knew when they designed our form of government, uh, are filled with people who will uh, can be corrupted, and they were in this case. But with the what happened in 1996, uh, I'm not sure it's ever happened on this scale in peacetime history before. Mm. It's happened during wartime. Uh, is that the media simply chose not to know, and to me that is the greatest form of fake news. Allowing a false story to to be floated because you know, you suspect, you don't even know, you suspect that the truth will subvert your political ambitions. In this case, the ambition to reelect uh, Bill Clinton. It's terrifying. It, you know, it, it really is. And thank God, you know, we, we didn't get the Clintons again, even though I'm no Trump fan. But thank God. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, but, because what happened is, is uh, just a, as a final note, uh, I was on a very good documentary came out called three years ago, just called TWA Flight 100 that I wasn't involved with. But it was very, very well done. And I was on CNN talking about it on one of their morning shows. And the, and the final question, one said, okay, Jack, if it was a missile, who shot it? Why did they shoot it? Why did it cover up? In that tone of voice, you know? Yeah. I said, well, yeah, I got a minute left, so let me just say that, that I said, this is Bill Clinton's Benghazi moment. I see he had a national security disaster happen on his watch uh, in an election campaign that he thought he was going to win. And he just kicked that can down the road past November, hoping for the best. And he realized that once you start kicking the can like well, Obama did, you can't kick it back. It's got to keep going forward. So she said, oh, okay, thank you, Jack. Well, next day, I go look at the transcript. My answer has been edited out of the transcript. Wow. That, that's the way they roll. This is fake news, you know? You, you create a version of news that you like, and God help the person who gets in the way. Yeah, that famous quote from Clinton, I'm going to show you what real power is, you know? Yeah, right, yeah. So listen, Jack, you know, I'm going to beg you to come back. I'm going to beg you to come back. What topic do you want to talk about when you come back? Ron Brown, uh, uh, Muhammad Ali, Zimmerman? I'll tell you what, you pick the topic that interests you most and we'll go from there, okay? Jack Cahill, thank you so much. Hey, Ed, thanks for having me on. It's just casual.com. Anyone who's interested, okay? You got it, brother. Thank you. Cashhill.com, and the, the book is that we're talking about right now is TWA 800, The Crash, The Cover-Up, and The Conspiracy. You can find that at OppermanReport.com. It's on our bookstore. Uh, but also, too, I know he's a right-wing guy, but I still like him. Uh, a lot of um, World Net Daily and stuff like that he writes for. But a lot of good – he covers the, the, the stuff that we're interested in. So check out his other books, uh, Ron Brown's Body. Uh, that is another book about TWA called A First Strike, uh, T TWA Flight 800 and the Attack on America. Book about Zimmerman, you know, and you guys know I had a lot of involvement in that Zimmerman case. And uh, my uh, opinions on it don't go along party lines or, or politically correctness or whatever you might want to call it. Uh, so Jack Cashel. Uh, oh, by the way, too, a couple of things I want to point out is um, he had mentioned a source he had in the White House and he didn't want to uh, disclose what the source's name was. I know who that source is. And I can tell you, it's a very, very credible source. The guy came off as a very credible, again, wasn't politically a, a, in my ballpark, uh, but came across very credible to me. One more thing I want to point out. I'm surprised you didn't hear that story about that uh, um, that landing pad thing, because that was a, everyone told that story, because uh, it was so funny. He said some guy showed up and he claimed to be with the, uh, some kind of Army Corps of Engineers or a general or something. You know, He had some kind of credentials, and he demanded they put down this strip, this landing pad for the for the nypd helicopters and then they found out the guy had no uh authority to do anything but the guys who i know who lifted that debris from the grant from the bottom of the the water there um and you can see them too there's a discovery channel documentary about these guys and they talk about it and it's uh, if you just google nypd harbor aviation discovery channel you find it on youtube i know all those guys and some of these guys were former navy seals former military, and they said when looking at the debris, because they've seen plane crashes, they've seen missile, uh, you know, attacks before, and that the, the debris they lifted up was definitely a missile attack. And so, and when you hear these different stories, people have different theories, I, I, I knew always back in the back of my mind. So it's good to have Jack Cashel here, who you can just tell who he's so familiar with every detail on this topic. If you like this show, go to OppermanReport.com. 
Become a member. A lot of great stuff in the member section will be adding there.